take this cupped crank washer, I'll call it, and you're gonna put it on to the crank like that. It's kind of like a spacer. And then what you're gonna do is take your flywheel and you're gonna put that on and you wanna test the starter plunger. So you're gonna need to get your head up here and pull the starter plunger out and make sure it meets and goes back like I just did. Once you're sure, then you know that you can put on your flywheel and secure it down. And you're gonna put your ARP bolts uh, directly in, but first you have to coat all the bolts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean off this face with brake cleaner off the vehicle, and then I'm gonna get all my bolts prepped and I'm gonna run them in in a cross pattern lightly, and then we're gonna torque. Okay, just to be clear, if you get the ARP flywheel bolts, this stuff goes under the fastener head itself, and then you can use Loctite 242 on the threads. And then you're gonna to torque to 70 foot-pounds, but you're gonna work your way there. You're not gonna just blast it. You're gonna go star pattern, nice and easy, and a few different successive runs at it. Don't forget your spacer, your curved spacer that goes right here, and then flywheel, and then ARP fasteners. I'm gonna set my torque wrench to 40 and I'm gonna go in a star pattern. And by the way, I have a punch put in right here. Do not leave that in there <laughs> when you go to start the engine. This is a 13 millimeter 12 point socket. Okay, I upped the torque wrench to 70 foot pounds per XAT racing and ARP recommendations. I'm gonna go star pattern. After I torque, I'm gonna to do a paint pen mark so I know that I've done it. They're all torqued. Punch out. I guess the next test is gonna be starting it up. Okay guys, we're gonna give it a test start. If you wired up your neutral safety switch properly and jumped it, as I showed in my video, your car should fire up. It'll have a whole bunch of check engine lights or codes, don't worry about that. You just want it to start here. Spray off your clutch pressure plate. Make sure it's all nice and clean. What's this? Remember, the side that you can grab with your hand like I do here is the side that goes away from the flywheel. So I know sometimes it's kind of hard to remember that. I wanna show you guys how to get the automatic dipstick guide out it's actually one of the most difficult things Let's take a long screwdriver and put it inside of it and then bang it really hard and that'll what that'll do is that'll put it flush with the manifold and then we're going to come from the bottom side and gain access to it this is what we're after the bolt is right here so you need to bend this towards the center of the car it's a 12 millimeter socket, by the way. <laughs> yes, it's out. This is called Don't Drop Your Transmission. It's a really fun game. Sometimes you need to clock the bell housing a little so you can put a long screwdriver in this little window down here and just kind of push. And it'll clock it and allow you to at least start the threads on these bolts. So that's what I've done right now is, is use this method. So it's gonna be pretty much impossible to torque these with this long of an extension <laughs> on here. The torque values of the upper larger 17 millimeter 
bell housing bolts are, I believe, 53 foot pounds. And then the smaller 14 millimeter ones are 27. So I can probably torque those, but torquing these up here is gonna be pretty tough. So I'm gonna set the impact gun on, I'm gonna set it on that setting. I guess I'll just run it. Next, raise up your jack so that you can get this rear cross brace on. Just keep an eye on your clearances, wiring, all those sorts of things. Okay, it's time to get all your wiring out of the way. This is the reverse switch. I connected it and I found this bracket probably from the automatic transmission. I can't remember where it's from, but this 10 millimeter fits right in there. I'm gonna trim that off and it'll keep the wiring away from the hot catalytic converter. There we go. And then what you can do, hopefully you left this wire holder and you can push it up. Rotate this whole thing up like that, and then secure it right in there. We need to cut those off, and then after that, we need to take a drive shaft measurement, and I'll cover that here in a second. get the cube speed shift lever fully fastened you are going to need h5 right here and a 13 millimeter to hold the nylock nuts onto this side as you tighten you just slip it over and figure out I, I would put the notch up here because otherwise you're going to have a gap. Um, figure out how you want it to fit and then you could do something as simple as running sheet metal screws with large washers. And then I'll take my heavy duty, man this thing is solid, cube speed shift knob. But man this thing is feels really nice. It's really substantial. If you needed to defend yourself, you could just unscrew your shift knob and chuck this at somebody. It's like an eight ball. Next, I'm gonna take some self-tapping sheet metal screws and I'm gonna pull this infinity boot so it's nice and tight on here and it seals it off the tunnel from the inside of the car. And I'm gonna run some big fat washers. So, on it. Just make sure you look under here and make sure you're not gonna, you know, drill into anything. I already checked, I'm not. Now comes the drive shaft part. This, uh, this part has been a serious pain because really the only thing out there aftermarket is one piece drive shafts and guys are having a lot of trouble with the vibration on those. So you would go on a one piece drive shaft, you would go from the AR5 out, which would be right here, all the way to the companion flange on the differential with some Rotoflex spacers in between on each side. Okay, that would be the idea. But in order to do so, you would need an adapter here. There's a couple places that do sell an adapter. It's about 100 to $130, depending on where you get it. The adapter then would allow you to transition over to like a Dana 1310 or 1350. It's it's actually pretty complicated, but no matter what, you're going to have to get a measurement, okay? Now, I am I plan to take the Solstice CV part of the drive shaft and have it welded onto my GS piece, the first piece here because it's a two-piece system. So, because I'm doing that, I need to take a hard measurement from this flange to the next reference point. And the next reference point would be the carrier bearing 
fastener location. And what you're going to notice when I take this measurement, it's exactly 28 and a half inches. Now, don't take that measurement and use it on your own vehicle if you do the AR5 swap. You're gonna to need to take this measurement yourself because we have tolerance stack ups in manufacturing that can end up moving things forward and back a little bit, okay? What I recommend is to get one of these $3 Harbor Freight aluminum rulers, 40 inch, it's only three bucks, and take it and use it to make a measurement. So you can see there, it's exactly 28 and a half inches. Then just for kicks, we're gonna take a second measurement back to the companion flange, just so we have a reference point going to the back, which I'll call it propeller shaft number two. So let's take that measurement now. This measurement actually is 28 and an eighth. Man, you metric guys, I just love metric so much better. I wish we had switched to millimeters, but anyway, you can see that it's on the hard surface of the companion flange right there. And then it's just over 28. So 28 and an eighth back on the propeller shaft number two and on shaft number one, we are at 28 and a half. Drive shaft number one of two. I have marked it at 28 and a half inches and what we need is we need it from this point here once it's installed onto this we need it to be 28 and a half inches to the center point of the carrier bearing bracket and really I just marked this here for kicks 28 and an eighth back to the differential right to the, to the companion flange will be right here that doesn't really matter. Nothing's changing there. Really what matters is from here to there. Once that CV thing gets welded on. While the drive shaft is at the drive shaft shop, you can take care of some other items. This is the 87 to 93 Mustang bezel installed. There's, it's not perfect. Uh, I would say this, I call this a five foot look where from five feet, it looks pretty darn good. This is the Mustang synthetic leather shift boot. And it takes a little bit of finessing to get this stuff installed. You're gonna have to get creative. I used some hot glue. I used some plastic welding. I did a variety of things in here. Anyway, you can see kind of how that's gonna look. This is the gray stitching. I thought that looked pretty good. I like that. So I'm pretty happy with that. I think that looks pretty good. I didn't do a very good job of showing the clutch master cylinder lines uh, being hooked up. When, when the clutch master cylinder's out, make sure you attach the fitting on there. XAT Racing has some really good instructions available online. Be sure to use that. Right here is the bleed line, and you can see that you'll be able to bleed it right out of there, which will be really convenient. This is a 36 inch, and then this is the 48 inch feed line. And the reason you want a 48 inch is to make sure that you stay away from the uh, headers or exhaust manifold, whatever you have down there, just keep that away from the heat. So that's kind of the setup. That's what it looks like. And we're getting closer. This is good. If you would like to maintain your rear vent, which goes from the front to the back, that's the back, you're gonna need to notch it out if you're doing a manual swap. I used a plastic weld and some ABS plastic cut to fit. I know it's not pretty, but no one is going to see that. So don't worry about it. If you don't care, you can just let it bleed off into the console area. But this is the front. Air flows this way. And now it'll be squeezed just a little bit and still continue into the back and come out to your passengers. Here's the vent installed ducting I guess you could call it here's the notch and you can see why you need to measure your shift lever so it plugs in there comes back here and uh, that gives a pretty clean look so fifth gear no problem reverse no problem This shifter fourth gear is pretty close down here. I mean, it's not, you know, it's pretty close to your 
lid. So there is a way you can get a straight shaft or a straight lever, which will bring fourth gear up a little bit and that'll make it more centered in here. It's time to get the pedal cut. I'm gonna err on the side of caution and go for this outer line because you don't, there's a weld behind this. You gotta be really careful. You don't wanna cut the weld and then have the whole pedal fall off. So make sure you're paying attention to what is behind what you're gonna cut. And then you can outline it and cut it and then bring that other half in that you cut off earlier for a kind of medium sized brake pedal pad. And then what you want to do now, oh, thunder, is fuse this together, probably with some heat. Recommendation, be sure to paint your pedal with it off the vehicle instead of painting it with it on the vehicle like this. In order to run your under dash closeout shroud, you're going to have to remove this ventilation duct to allow your third pedal to work properly. So I've already popped the plastic rivets. This thing just comes off and then you can uh, use your closeout shroud underneath your dash. A few things worth noting for a successful clutch master cylinder bleed. Make sure that your fitting here on the side of the clutch master with the two washers, make sure that that is torqued pretty well. Uh, we had a leak initially, so the, the pedal would stay to the floor, the clutch pedal. Once you get that all successfully, you know, a closed system, you should have resistance and your pedal should be thrown back towards you. When you put, so you should be able to push it in, it'll come back towards you. If it's not, there's either air in the system or it's leaking somewhere and it was dripping down and going down the fender well, you can't see in there, and coming out the bottom of the car. And I went through quite a bit of fluid. So that's a warning sign to you if you experience that. But this one man bleeder system is the way to go. It did it really fast. Uh, it worked really well. If it wasn't for my, I guess you could say, mistorque of this fitting here on the side of the clutch master. Just make sure that that's nice and tight. And once it is, you should have no problems. And then keep an eye on your fluid, pump it, uh, the clutch pedal a number of times after you think you're done and then watch that fluid and make sure it doesn't go away. It should not go away. This is the spot right here. So this is what the work they did. They got this inserted into there. I took the measurement from there to the center line on the carrier bearing and it's 28 and a half inches. So this is how it looks right there. Here's the shop, Universal Automotive, Concord, North Carolina. Can you talk just briefly about this process, just from a technical standpoint, what you okay, did? We saw this piece off the other shaft that you brought me, and then we measured from here to center, yep. found out where we needed to be. We saw this off, left the seam on it where they had to weld, where it fusion welded together, melted. Then we took this tube and soldered off where it was going to be, where it was going to be relationship where the well was. Then we put this piece in the tube and uh, in the lathe with a steady wrist and we heated this hot red and we took my uh, tool die and pushed it on and shrunk it. 
Okay. Then we drove it up in here and then got it running straight and then welded it. Okay. Here. How much horsepower do you think this could hold, roughly? Yeah. Just off from experience. 500 or more. 500 or more? Okay. Cool. run these in by hand and just start kind of running them in six of them last two is I think I'm gonna leave this with a little play and go after those fasteners right up there and then I'll bolt down the carrier bearing I think okay torque into 20 All right, diff flange is all bolted up, carrier bearing all bolted up, output flange of the transmission all torqued and bolted up. So we're going for heat shields and exhaust next. We are in the home stretch. If you guys have any desire to retain your heat shields, you're going to have to bend the heck out of it. I used a rubber mallet and smashed down the middle, trying to keep the side contouring the same so that you can fasten it in. This is pretty exciting. You need to end up with a clevis extension that looks probably similar to what you see here. And the reason is you do not want it preloaded when the clutch pedal is all the way out. What you want is a little bit of free play. Let's see if I can. So there's a little bit of free play right there, maybe about a half inch maximum. And that allows the clutch master cylinder rod to be fully extended out and not activate the throw out bearing at all, which would lead to a slip situation. You're gonna have to figure out a creative way to make an extension probably. And that's how I did it. And one final thing is I took the dead pedal out. I know that doesn't look ideal, but you'll notice that, well, I noticed that with the dead pedal in, it really, bothered my foot and it prevented this clutch pedal from going all the way down as far as it should so i did take out the dead pedal it's very easy to remove in fact if you just pull it really hard it'll come right out after you move the carpet down she's down she's ready to start and to test i am kind of scared to be honest with you this is the moment of the truth this is the moment of truth i can't even talk <sighs> did i do it correctly i have no idea well let's find out it's in neutral. Clutch is in. So weird.
reverse on your automatic deal right there. How cool is that? to your transmission like I showed in my video your car will hit its quote-unquote top speed at about 85 miles an hour the reasoning for that is because your VSS is now trying to take a measurement off the AR5 transmission instead of the A650 transmission power delivery is instantaneous though I'm in fourth gear right now one-to-one -one ratio you put your foot down just a little bit and it just goes no torque converter interaction, none of that garbage. It's direct, one-to-one, -one, fourth gear. Now on the CD9 transmission, I believe fifth gear is your one-to-one. -one. So if you do the CD9 option, just keep that in mind. Also, your shifter placement is a little odd. I get people asking me all the time about, you know, what gear are you in, right? So I'm in, I'm in first right now, and it looks kind of like it's in the middle, right? So you gotta rev it up. Good start right there. 